Hey everyone, welcome to the Evangelist Nick Garrett channel, Truth First Christianity in a Post-Christian Country. Today we're talking about the status of the modern church. Now, in any given town today, one can find a Christian church on practically any corner. We're so used to seeing them that they just melt into the background. And we take a lot of things for granted. We take for granted that in other parts of the world, many Christians have never seen a Bible. We take for granted that young people growing up today in first world industrialized countries have not ever heard the gospel. Uh, Bible stories that are common to denominations of every stripe. And we assume that today's young people grew up hearing them just like we did. And that's an assumption we shouldn't be making because it's not true. In non-Christian countries, many Christians today have to worship in hiding. A December 26, 2016 article revealed that Christianity had become the most persecuted religion in the world. According to Massimo Intravigne uh, from the Center for Studies of New Religions, 90,000 Christians were killed in, 20, 000, in 2016, while approximately about a half billion believers have to practice their faith in hiding. Just take America, for example. Statistics reveal the stark truth. 25 years ago, between the late 80s and early 90s, about 40% of the population in America attended weekly church. As of 2016, only 17.7% .7 of Christians attend church regularly. That data includes the results of the halo effect, which is a scientific phenomenon uh, when the interviewer asks how many times a week uh, or how many times a month do you attend church? The halo effect says that some people will try to uh, appear more moral than they are. And they might say, oh, I go a couple times a month when in reality they go once every two months. So this is good data. This data took that halo effect into account. Now, every year, 4,000 churches in America closed their doors, while only 1,000 opened them. Between 1990 and 2000, the long-time trend of new church starts declined at an alarming rate. Only 4,500 churches opened during that whole 10-year period. That means 5,500 churches didn't open that should have, according to prior statistical trends. Now, the problem is by no means limited to new church starts. There are troubles in mainstream denominations in America, too. Uh, for example, Episcopalians and Presbyterians uh, have millions of dollars in lawsuits tied up over properties and churches, with more becoming empty every year. Uh, the Catholic Church has closed a thousand parishes since 1995, and that doesn't even get into the scandals and problems they're having. A recent 2019 data set revealed that only a third of Catholics actually believe in transubstantiation. Transubstantiation is a big deal to Catholic doctrine. It's one of their foundational doctrine and core beliefs. It says that when uh, you have the Eucharist, the wafer and wine actually tangibly become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. On top of that, the Catholic Church is about to engage in a church council, an ecumenical council, just like we talk about in church history, called the Amazon Synod. And it's already been revealed that they're going to dramatically alter the face of their version of Christianity way more than it's ever been. Now, a collaborative polling group called the State of Theology gathered statistics among evangelicals. Those results further confound According to their data, over half of the American evangelical Christians that they polled that attend church every week reject foundational evangelical beliefs. 46% of them believe that God accepts the worship of other religions. That's a surprising result considering the stereotypical view of some evangelicals as um, legalistic and uh, critical of the truth claims of other denominations. It also links evangelicals to Catholics and that Catholics agree with that sentiment that God accepts the worship of other religions. In their catechism, number 841, it says that 
the church plainly states its solidarity with Islam as fellow believers and recipients of salvation. Now, perhaps the most startling statistic for the evangelical church showed that near 50% of evangelicals believed that an individual needed to contribute something of their own to their salvation. Now, remember, justification through God's grace by faith alone was the core deal that came out of the 16th century Protestant Reformation. Now, as for people leaving the church, Dr. Richard Crescier, a statistician from the Francis Schaeffer Institute of Church Leadership Development, stated, quote, Every year, 2.7 million church members fall into inactivity. This translates into the realization that people are leaving the church. From our research, we found that they're leaving as hurting and wounded victims of some kind of abuse, disillusionment, or just plain neglect. Today, over 60% of Americans still identify themselves as Christians, and most of that number have decidedly rejected traditional church attendance. Some of this can probably be attributed to the continued rise of social media and the ability to fellowship and participate in ways that are more human, but it still doesn't replace the fellowshipping of believers getting together any more than it would having a real party versus a party on Skype, right? Um, so that doesn't explain the whole picture. Now, what is interesting, I read something the other day that indicates that maybe these changes in Christianity are good and that they will be good. Today, most churches in America have 75 or fewer members. And because persecution of Christianity is beginning in the West, believers can't sit on the fence anymore like they've done for generations. You've got to either firmly be in the faith or out of it. Uh, and maybe that will turn out to be a good thing. You'll have smaller churches with more devoted believers. That comes down to the question of what church is to begin with. In the New Testament, unequivocally, what happens is Jesus Christ touches somebody, they're born again, and then they seek out other people who have had this experience with Jesus Christ. That's essentially what church is. It's only been a modern phenomenon, this idea of, hey, come here and we can get you, God. Like, we can make this thing happen for you, right? And that has evolved over the centuries, certainly, but taken on a very unique uh, vantage in the West. Anyway, folks, that's it for today. Please visit Amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Garrett and check out the book called Just Tell Me the Truth About the Future of Christianity. If you want to read more, visit our Teespring store to get some of our cool new shirts that came in, coffee cups. Uh, there were Nephilim on the Earth in those days, available in all sizes and colors. Truth First Christianity available. Hashtag that on Twitter. You can also check us out on BitChute at Evangelist Nick G. Just went over to Instagram at Evangelist Nick Garrett. And uh, I look forward to talking to you next time. As always, may God bless you and may your work today bear fruit. Thanks. <laughs>